Okay. Okay, cool. Hey, okay, so I'm, I'm Zadik. Um, I don't know if you know this, I'm actually pretty new to new to front-end web development. I've done back-end and I've done other things. So what I've been basically doing on the internet is learning front-end development s simultaneous to teaching it. Uh, that way um, I can much more, I can solidify my education as I'm working on it and, and anything that I'm learning that I can share and share not just share, but I can share through my unique process. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous right now. Um, never done this before. All right, so anyway, this is going to be about how I learned to stop worrying and love CSS. I'm just going to check if there's any comments. Cool. Okay. All right. So, okay. So, this is a website. If you wanted to check it out yourself, you can go to bit.do slash love CSS. Just zoom in. And then that should bring up the slides. Uh, you can go left to right with the arrow keys to navigate them. Uh, it's up to you. And then I can put it on code pen after if you like. So, so let's talk about the web for just a couple of minutes. I don't think this will take longer than 10 minutes just for what it's worth. So how I learned to stop worrying and love CSS. I think it's really important that we as designers, developers, or people that are interested in the web genuinely um, just we, we're not scared of the tools that we're given. The thing is that CSS, I think, for a lot of people, is like this really tedious and painful process, and it just doesn't make sense. And I think a lot of people either burn out, give up, or they, they start working in some other field, or you know, some other field within programming. And I think that's fine for some people, but, I, but the problem with that is that the web, I mean, it touches so many people's lives. Think about how many times you interact with the web, whether through your phone, through, you know, it's everywhere, it's ubiquitous. It's like in um, the TV show The Expanse, the proto-molecule, it's everywhere. So the point is that the web, the web is one of the most adopted user interfaces in all that we know. It's, it's pretty significant, and if you just extrapolate where this is going five, 10 years from now, um, you know, this will sound weird, but people might be bored with the internet, you know? We'll have satellites everywhere in, the sp in space, beaming internet to everyone, and the thing is, I don't suspect that CSS will go away. I think that we're going to have tools that improve it, that make people, uh, you know, it, it make, make it easier for people to use it, but I, I think overall we're, we're kind of stuck with CSS, at least for like the next while. And for a lot, you know, for, for established web developers, that's amazing, right? They have a craft, they're good at it, they can keep working. But for newbies, it's, uh, you know, it's painful. Um, so I just want to talk about a technique, which is the whole point of this talk, that you can use in your uh, websites as you're designing or even trying to understand somebody else's website to make the process malleable, to make it amiable. So just how do you do it? At least how do you do it with less pain? All right. So again, the point is, billions of us monkeys are using the web. And my question to you is, what percent of us comprehend CSS, have an intuition about CSS, that can call upon CSS when we, when we, we, need, to, when we need to, and, and not have this unnecessary difficulty? And the point, is that even right? Is it right that such a small minority of even web developers even understand this stuff intuitively? So how do we how do we make it likable? How do we how do we make it lovable? Um, so it's a technique, right? So I wrote an article called "Learn This One Trick to Debug CSS." I'll just pull it up on Medium. You can search the internet for "Learn This One Trick to uh, Debug CSS," but you should be careful. Uh, anyway, if you go to medium.com/slash Zadik like this. You'll see the uh, you'll see the article here, and in the article I talk about this technique, the one that you see right here. How do we make it intuitive to debug, even learn how to build websites? It's really simple. It's nothing that complicated. So let's go back to the slides. Okay, how do we do it? In the article, there's this like one sentence that I like particularly liked, and the point is that CSS you can think of it as a double-edged sword. 
It can be used to both construct and deconstruct websites. I think we get into this sort of like mind-numbing experience of thinking that CSS is just good for one thing, but really we can use it to not just build things, but we can use them to tear them down. So let me just point out what I mean. This is an example of like a header I was like fooling around with for uh, this idea, and <clears throat> it's featuring Neil deGrasse Tyson, and I love Neil deGrasse Tyson, that's why he's being featured here. So we have, right, this header, I am Neil, and it's pretty simple. And let's say, as we're working on a website, we want a, a way to understand, hang on, I'm just, I'm just gonna check the comments real quick, because I haven't checked, and I'm like worried that no one, no one can hear this. Oh, cool, okay. Yeah, okay, cool. Hey! <laughs> uh, you guys can see me, right? Oh, great, thanks. Okay, you get some like music in the background, which is pretty sweet. Cool, okay, um, for what it's worth, I'm in Thailand right now, just to explain what you see. We can talk more about that later. Let's go back to the talk, sorry for the interruption. So here's Neil deGrasse Tyson, and here's the header, and we wanna understand how how to make this website. Let's say we're visitors to this website and we want to understand how is it constructed. So imagine we use CSS to apply a rule everywhere using the asterisk, right? So you've seen like asterisk rule, blah, blah, blah. Let's put something in there. So to start, let's put an outline, just an outline around everything. And we're going to use an outline, not a border, because outlines, uh, they don't, change the box model, they just draw a line around it. If we use a border, it's gonna give us some side effects, so we're just gonna ignore that for now. All right, so we draw our outline, and okay, it's starting to make sense. It's not the, the most visible, obviously it depends on the website we're using, whether we can actually see the line or not. Most websites are just white. But here's where we can start. And that's fine, right, it's better. Now for what it's worth, notice the, the purple boxes, that's kind of like a div, because right? we have the, the box around it. Now these arrows over here are sort of how spans work because we have the box inside of the div, that being the difference between a block element and, a, and an inline block element. So the point is that you have an intuition about what's going on. If I just said, how do you build this? I mean, I'm sure you could figure it out, but the point is that once you can see the underlying structure, you can start to make a lot of guesses or sort of inferences about the website's design. For example, it might be hard to see this from, you can't see my face. Can't, no, you can't see my finger. Um, the, there's a, a line right here following the, the shape of the header. So you can imagine that would be one grouped div, and then inside of it, maybe different divs. Or, you know, that's the point. You can see the structure. It's like a blueprint. Talking about blueprints, let's make it blue. So we're going to make the text white, and then let's just make everything else blue. Okay, now we're, we're, we're starting to, to we're talk, we're talking. We're talking already. Now we're talking because. Um, whether our website was white or the text was white and the, the website was black or whatever, right, now we can clearly separate our concerns. We can see the elements, we can see the boxes, it's getting better. Now, if you're sort of peevish like me, you might notice that there's like a soft shadow right around here and it's not, you know, this doesn't really need a sense of depth. We just want to see our website, okay? So now we're going to turn off any filters, we're going to turn off any box shadows, we're just, just going to go for it. Now, you know, I think it's a lot easier to say, can you build this website, rather than to say, can you build this website? Because there's just there's stuff in here and we don't need it. And so we can, we can start here. Okay, so the point is we, got, we, we went from here to here. And the way that we did that wasn't complicated. We effectively, I'll show you how to do this, don't worry. We effectively just inserted into the DOM a rule that applies, uh, it was like a series of, yeah, like color, background, there's a couple things. And I'll give you the file when it's done, so don't worry. But the point is, pretty easy to go from there to here. Now, let's go to this website. You know, I'm sure you've seen this website before. The point is, this is probably the world's most decorated website in terms of viewership. I think more people have interacted with this website than like atoms in their bodies. That might be inaccurate. The point is, everyone uses this website. Um, so let's explore, right? Let's go to google.com. You can open google.com and try to make some, you know, inferences about what this might look like under the hood, right? We want to see the outlines around the divs, the spans, and 
If you're like me, you have an expectation that the level of complexity is proportional to the complexity shown. I don't see a lot of complexity, right? Like a nav bar at the top, a logo, there's like six elements. So let me turn on the debugger and I'll show you what happens. So obviously this isn't it. It'd be hilarious if it is. Um, I just really like the new Star Wars, so. Okay, so jokes aside, this is what it looks like. And to be frank, that sort of feels like this to me. Um, this is really unwelcoming. So I'm not trying to like point out or, or blame Google or whatever. I'm just trying to point out that when we don't understand our tools, we get websites like these. And you might say, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is Google, right? So they have this website is for mobile, it's for blah, 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 right? This is for watch. This does, I mean, maybe. When I go to the website and I resize it, unless they're using some special media query, this website is not responsive, right? This website is very, very simple. And so to me, to see websites being developed like this, not just any website, but like, you know, websites that everyone interacts with, that's terrifying. Because couldn't we make it simpler? And the reason, the argument for why we should do this is because, think about the children, man. Think about all the people that are gonna get so frustrated with these tools that affects everyone's lives and there is no intuition about how you start. Right, so the point, the point that I'm really chastising right now, this is a quote from Alan Kay, is it that complex? Or is it really complex? Or did we just make it complicated? And I'm worried that in the development world, we tend to make these arbitrarily complex decisions that may be beneficial for some reason at the time that we conceive them. The problem is that going into the future, those decisions affect not just tens or thousands, but billions of people's of lives. And that's a problem if we want to make these fields more welcoming. So the point is, right, what do we do about it? And the point is we can use a CSS debugger. That's what the article was about. That's what this is about. <laughs> you can visit this link, um, oddly enough. Uh, let me just point out how this works. So effectively, we go to this website and like that. It's gonna bring us to a GIS that has a little bit more information. So let me just point out how to do this, right? So we, we open up this website. BitDo can be a little bit slow, so just give it a few seconds if it's not instant. So here's a GIST, and the point is, it's a GIST. We don't need some like giant repo and blah, blah, blah. Like, we don't need any of that stuff. Okay, so all we are doing is inserting into the DOM a couple rules. Uh, this is the current version. Thanks, man. So, right, let's say we have a star rule, and then inside of it, we use color, background, outline. All these things in unison to create that sort of really nuanced experience. When we're done, we can wrap it into some JavaScript so that we can turn it on and off just using like a mouse click, right? So here's how we do that. You can go to here, and you're gonna see this like really sketchy button. Like, press me. Um, there's gonna be a button right at the top. It's like so slow for a button. Yeah, there it is. Okay, and I already got it, but what we can do is basically just drag this into your bookmarks. And if you look really closely, you're gonna see JavaScript at the top. Um, it's just inserting some JavaScript into your website. And so let me, let me show you how this would look. All right, so here is a website I'm developing for a course. It's like a, it's an interactive color picker, really cute. Um, it's like adorable actually. So what is the expected complexity of this website? I don't wanna see like a billion artistic lines um, I don't want to see a mosaic, a mosaic, I just want to see the shape of this website. So let's turn it on, and it's like, so clearly, I'm not trying to like be egotistical or anything, I'm just pointing out that we can actually design websites with this level of, of, of clarity, but it's going to be really hard to do it if we don't use any tool, because if we're not using a debugger, it's like writing a, a program without print statements or console statements, I mean, without console statements. It's, it's problematic that we don't understand the state of our website. So anyway, my encouragement to you is, as you're developing and designing websites, use tools that were designed to help you as a human, not help you get your job done faster, right? Because that's, that's, that's not what we're at. We're, we're not computers anymore, right? Our job titles are not computers, 
which it used to be, this computer used to mean a person, we're designers and developers, and in the future will be something else. But for now, let's, let's try to make the things that we do not just better for us, but for everyone else who interacts with them, so that we're, we're, we're passing the baton as gracefully as we can. Anyway, if you have questions or thoughts or comments or you want to improve it or whatever, just, you know, let me know. Um, I'm just going to check if there's any comments. So I've been like a dictator so far. Oh no! Is it still working? The thing is, I've got this all recorded uh, locally, so I'll put that online. Should have the audio. Uh, if anyone has questions, this is a perfect time to ask. So let me know. Um, anyway, if this is your first time noticing me, because I'm going to put this on YouTube, you can find me at Twitter slash username underscore Zadig, because oddly enough, my name was already taken. And yeah, my plan is to do more of these to try to demystify web development so that we are, we are as open-minded and, and, and friendly to others as possible. All right, so if there's no questions, uh, thank you for watching me do this. Uh, it's random and it's the first time, so I'm sure there are things that I'll improve, but really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put like links in the YouTube video just in case to help get this all organized for you. Okay, I think that's it. Thanks, all three of us. Okay.